So the theory of Lie algebras of algebraic groups is now in place. I think from now on I'm just going to abuse notation a little bit. And I'll just identify. I'll just write L of G for the tangent space at the identity. Uh, and so we've made this into a Lie algebra. And I'll simply write, uh, if I have phi from G to H, a morphism of algebraic groups. I will simply write D phi from L of G to L of H. Uh, I'll just write that instead of D phi E. It's the differential at the identity. So this is a Lie algebra homomorphism. Okay, so we've proved all of these things. In fact, we have a functor from algebraic groups to the category of finite dimensional Lie algebras taking group G to L of G and morphism phi to d phi. So that's where we are. I think my final gimmick in this notation is uh, for a group G, I'll often write simply that same letter, capital G, I'll, I'll just turn it into a little German font G. So I'll just use that, that uh, German G for the Lie algebra of algebraic group big G. So that's just kind of a shorthand. Rather than writing L of G, I'll simply write little g as we go. So let's uh, maybe just recall, just really finally here, uh, all of the things that we've established so far, we've, we've proved that the dimension of the Lie algebra little g of big G is the same as the dimension of the group. I guess you need to take the identity component if your group's not connected. We've proved that if H is a closed subgroup, then uh, the Lie algebra of big H, so that would be, with this shorthand, that would be this German H. You see, I'm very bad at drawing German letters. So you've got to understand that that sort of H there that I come up with is meant to be this nice German font. Um, so that's the Lie algebra L of big H. So this has just been identified with all X in the Lie algebra of G, so point derivations with the property that X kills the ideal of that closed subset H. So I, I'm, I'm abusing notation a little bit. I'm always thinking in terms of tangent space. So remember, tangent space at point E is the point derivations from the coordinate algebra of G to the field for that point. Last time, L of G denoted something slightly different. It denoted left invariant derivations from the coordinate algebra of G to itself. And in those terms, in terms of left invariant derivations, this wouldn't actually be quite the right formula. This, this, this is X as a point derivation. It sends functions to scalars. But if we were working in terms of left invariant derivations, this, this would be sending functions to functions. And uh, in those terms, you would be wanting to write uh, x sends uh, i of h to a subset of i of h. But I very seldom work in, 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 in that way. For me, I'm always going to think about the Lie algebra as being point derivations on the group. So that, that uh, red formula is, is, is never going to be applied for us. Okay, but okay, so if you have a closed subgroup, then the Lie algebra is automatically a subalgebra of the Lie algebra of G. And the final thing to remind you about is that we did already calculate the Lie algebra of the general linear group, that most important algebraic group, uh, and uh, we identified it with the 
general linear Lie algebra, little g l n of k. So my, my shorthand notation of uh, denoting the Lie algebra of big G by German G is applying here. Big G L N, its Lie algebra is little g l n. Uh, and under this identification, um, the ij matrix unit, eij, inside that, that matrix Lie algebra is uh, identified with the, the element of the tangent space, so the point derivation that's partial differentiating with respect to the ij coordinate function and then evaluating it e. So that's uh, the theory we've set up. So now let's go to examples. I think we've already understood the Lie algebra of the special linear group, matrices of determinant 1. We already showed that that was the, so that would be little s l n of k, which is a subalgebra of g l n of k. And we, we've identified this with the matrices of trace 0. Okay, so, and indeed, if you take two matrices of trace 0, their commutator has trace 0, because uh, trace of AB equals trace of BA. Okay, uh, so... Um, that's a subalgebra. That's the Lie algebra of the group SLN. This and this this totally fits, right? Because if you remember, the special linear group embeds into the general linear group. So there was a short exact sequence of groups here, uh, and uh, then uh, the the quotient group is is just the multiplicative group GM. So this would be determinant here, that, that, that morphism of algebraic group, sending an n by n matrix in GLN to a non-zero scalar. And uh, when you take this and you, you, you uh, differentiate, apply our functor, this gives you the short exact sequence of the Lie algebras, little s l n, little g l n. And then the Lie algebra of the multiplicative group, well, that's just the one-dimensional Lie algebra. It's just the field. And, and there's only one possible Lie bracket to put on that because of skew commutativity. It's got to be an abelian Lie bracket, so the bracket just being identically zero. And uh, so this was determinant. This map here, this is the differential of determinant, and the differential of determinant is trace. So, yeah, this is exactly the kernel of that Lie algebra homomorphism defined by trace. The kernel of trace is little sln. Okay, so that all fits nicely. So the next example I want to do, I want to actually go through a kind of fairly long calculation because uh, it's, it's an important example. I want to calculate exactly the Lie algebra of the symplectic group sp2n of k. So, of course, I'm going to denote that little sp2n of k. It's going to be a, a Lie subalgebra of the general linear Lie algebra gl2n of k. So, I want to work out exactly what subspace is the symplectic Lie algebra. So let's see, if you remember that the, my, my chosen uh, coordinates, I picked coordinates, I picked uh, my favorite uh, representative for a non-degenerate skew symmetric form on two n-dimensional vector space. So that, that was encoded in the gram matrix. So I was just denoting that capital J, but I, I picked coordinates so that the gram matrix was this matrix here, this 2n by 2n skew symmetric matrix where I just write Jn for the, the kind of the other identity matrix where it's the wrong diagonal. Okay, so that's the n by n matrix Jn. And then the group sp2n of k with this choice of coordinates, it's, it's uh, all g in the general linear group such that we, we had G transpose J, G equals J. That was what uh, 
preserving this bilinear form turned into in these coordinates. So uh, from this equation, g transpose j, g equals j, we get generators for the ideal of sp2n of k, the, the vanishing ideal inside the coordinate algebra of gl2n of k. So this ideal is, uh, it's going to be, so I'm going to try and let, let me see if I can build this. So I need to think about that. So that's that's a, a matrix identity. So, the, so from the entries of those 2n by 2n matrices, I get 2n squared equations cutting out that uh, closed subvariety. So let me see. So my equations are going to be labeled by u and v running from 1 up to 2n. So let me see, I've got to think, what is this saying? So the UV entry of this is just uh, JUV. And the UV entry of that guy, well, that's a matrix product. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to need some other variables, R and S maybe going from 1 to 2N. So it's going to be the UR entry of this, the RS entry of this, and then the SV entry of that. So the UR entry of G transpose is the RU entry of G, and then it's J, R, S, G, S, V. Okay, so I, th those are the equations that I want to hold, but I want to turn this into, into polynomial equations. So I'm going to replace G here by the, co the, the coefficient function T. And I'm going to bring that, instead of saying equals zero, I'm just going to bring that over there. So it, it's uh, those that those give me the generators for the ideal. Now we've got generators from the ideal. The Lie algebra sp2n of k is going to be all matrices in uh, the general linear Lie algebra which uh, send each of those uh, generating polynomials, each of those quadratics, to zero. So a matrix is, of course, a linear combination of matrix units, so i and j going from 1 to 2n, and then I want uh, these uh, point derivations to send each of these polynomials to zero. So here's what I'm going to get. So ij goes from 1 to n, a i j, now, Eij is, of course, partial differentiating with respect to Tij. And then I need these polynomial equations. Let me just copy them down here. So I want that evaluated at the identity element to be 0 for all u and v. OK, so this looks a little bit nasty, but it's really not too bad. I've got to differentiate. That's just a scalar, so I can ignore that. Here I've got I've got a product two functions so I'm going to have to use the product rule there and there so let let's first differentiate the first guy that'll leave the second guy which I have to evaluate at the identity so let me see if I can do this a little bit in my head um, so I'm differentiating the first guy so I it looks like I need r to equal i and uh, j to equal u. So I'm not going to be summing over r anymore, but uh, j is going to be equal to u. And then uh, that will then just become the identity, right? So, so but now I've, I've, I've forced r to equal i, so this, this r summation is collapsing as well. So uh, the r is equal to i, and then I'm left with this TSV, which I'm going to evaluate on E. Oh, so this is going to force, because, you, so you're only going to get 1 if S equals V, otherwise you're going to get 0. So this is going to force that S is equal to V. So this S summation collapses as well. And so we just get this, uh, and uh, we're actually now only summing over I. Okay, so that's that first one. 
and uh, let me see if I can do the second one. Um, so this is very similar. I'm differentiating the second guy. So this uh, forces S to equal I and J to equal V. So that's forcing S to equal I. Um, and I've got to put the A. And J is being forced to be equal to V. And then I've got to evaluate the first one on the identity. So that forces R to equal U, which collapses the R summation. And uh, so this R here, that's being forced to equal U. So that becomes our e equations for all U and V. Um, but this is just, now I can write it as a single matrix identity. This is just uh, the UV entry of A transpose J plus JA equals zero. So let's uh, write that one more time. We've just shown that the Lie algebra, little sp, 2n of k, is the set of all matrices in the general linear Lie algebra GL, 2n of k, satisfying that single matrix equation. Um, I, I've done everything in coordinates here because I just did that brutal calculation. But uh, if you wanted to be coordinate free, you could do that. Then the symplectic group for, for V being a symplectic vector space with this bilinear form, it would be all G in the general linear group such that then, then in, in coordinate with, without uh, coordinates, it's that G preserves the bilinear form. So this is for all V and V prime in the symplectic vector space. And we've just calculated the Lie algebra of that. It's all linear endomorphisms of V. So the, the equation that we just got, we got uh, X V V prime plus V X V prime is zero for all V and V prime in V. So this is what it means for a group element G to preserve a bilinear form. Right here is what it means for a Lie algebra element, an endomorphism of V to preserve a bilinear form. This, this equation right here. Okay, so that's uh, calculated the um, symplectic Lie algebra explicitly in terms of matrices. So now we can actually calculate the dimension of the symplectic group because that's the same as the dimension of the symplectic Lie algebra, which is now easy to compute as it's just linear algebra. I don't think it was so obvious from the nonlinear equations defining the group what the dimension of that uh, uh, connected algebraic group was. But now with, with, with uh, now that we've, we've linearized, it, it's a simple calculation. So I'm going to go through this as well because it's going to be very important for us to, to know this uh, symplectic group very well. You can do exactly the same thing for the special orthogonal group, but I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to put that as one of the exercises on homework. So what do we need? We need uh, matrices. So maybe I'll just, just uh, switch to block matrices. So, so this is a 2n by 2n matrix, but I'm writing it as n by n blocks, just like I've written this uh, gram matrix J as n by n blocks. So I'm looking at matrices, uh, not in there, a matrices in the symplectic Lie algebra. So what do we need? We need that the matrix transpose times the R gram matrix, which is Jn minus Jn plus our gram matrix times our matrix is the zero matrix. Okay, so it's just a really silly calculation. Um, let me maybe cheat just a little bit. Um, so how about I bring this over to the other side? So that's got to be equal to that. And then I want to, to negate uh, something somewhere because I brought it over to the other side. So that becomes like that. 
and uh, how about I transpose this uh, sneakily, just like this, so it's going to be the transpose of A, the transpose of D, the transpose of B, and the transpose of C. And now let me multiply out, so it's going to be um, minus C transpose J N, A transpose J N, minus b transpose j n oh, that was uh, multiplying matrices is pretty hard um, <laughs> minus d transpose j n and b transpose j n that's got to be equal to the right hand side which is minus j n c minus j n d j n a and j n b and so from this I see, let me see, what shall I do first? I see that uh, this has to equal that. Um, Jn squared squares to the identity. So I can write that down more simply as simply saying b equals Jn b transpose Jn. And so this, that's, that's this uh, bottom right corner. And this kind of crops up quite a lot. I'm going to just denote this by B dagger. So this is B flipped in this uh, odd diagonal. Okay, so that's an easy little check you can do. If you, if you uh, conjugate B transpose by this matrix J, the effect is just to take the matrix B and reflect it in this odd diagonal. So I'm going to call that B dagger uh, in this calculation. So B is B dagger. So that's that entry. Similarly, this entry right here, look, the minuses cancel. It shows that C equals C dagger. And then there's this equation from this corner, which uh, if, if I... Uh, and maybe this corner, you see these two corners are actually equivalent equations. So the bottom left and the top right is just the same bunch of n squared equations. Let me use that one. So that's saying that if I, if I multiply on the left by this Jn, that's saying that, uh, um, how shall I write this? Uh, no, I guess I want this one. This one's more convenient. If I, if I multiply on the left by Jn, that shows me that D is a dagger. So we end, we're ending up with uh, matrices. So, so instead of putting D down there in that corner, that's just uh, not, not A dagger either. There's a minus sign that I, that I missed. D is minus A dagger from these equations. One side's got a minus, the other side doesn't. So that D down there in that bottom corner, that D is not, uh, it, it, it is totally determined by A, it's A dagger. And these guys, B has to equal B dagger, and C has to equal C dagger. So B and C have to have symmetry. So uh, how many choices are there? So uh, um, to, for, so for B, you, you, you can basically pick anything on the diagonal or above, but then the, the, the entries of B below the diagonal are determined because B has to equal B dagger. So for B, there's a, a, it's, there's a triangle's worth of choices on, on that odd diagonal or above, and similarly for C, so we've got this triangle of choices for B, this triangle of choices for C, and then A can be any n by n matrix. So we see that the, 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 basically you can write down a basis for this vector space now very easily, and you see that the dimension of this vector space, it's uh, n n plus 1 plus n squared, which is what? 2n squared plus n. And so right there, we've just uh, calculated the uh, dimension of the symplectic Lie algebra. Hence, the dimension of the symplectic group. It's 2n squared plus n. Uh, so that's a kind of tedious and, and, and long calculation, but it's quite nice to have coordinates for the symplectic Lie algebra available, and we'll use them later on when, we, when we're analysing that Lie algebra structure in, in more detail.
as I said, you can do the same thing with the special orthogonal group. You get the special orthogonal Lie algebra and, and you can calculate the dimension of that similarly. And I think on the homework, I, I put a different way of getting this dimension where you don't have to linearize and don't go via the Lie algebra. Um, but it, it, it requires a little bit of knowledge about orbits of algebraic groups. So, so that, that's not something we've discussed. Great, so that was example two. Third example, let G be any algebraic group. And take some element, little g, inside g. Then there's this uh, automorphism from g to g, given by conjugation by that element, sending x to g, x, g inverse. So this is, of course, an inner automorphism. Because it's a, a morphism of algebraic groups, you can differentiate it. And it'll go from the Lie algebra to the Lie algebra. So this is, this is denoted capital A add G. So this is an important notation. Capital A add G. It's the differential of int G. So uh, I just uh, write add G of X. So uh, let's see, um, for the group GLN, you can calculate this quite easily and write it down. So what is add G of X? Um, and so it's really enough to know what this is for GLN, by the way, because any algebraic group can be embedded as a closed subgroup of GLN. Uh, and uh, so, and, and then the Lie algebra of that subgroup is a subalgebra of the Lie algebra little GLN. And so then you can calculate add G of X in general via those embeddings and the formula I'm just about to write down. Well, what could it possibly be? We've got an invertible matrix, invertible N by N matrix G, and we've got a general N by N matrix X in the general linear Lie algebra, what could this adjoint action possibly be? It's just a conjugation of that general n by n matrix conjugating by the invertible matrix G. Let me see if I can show you how to prove that. Um, so um, it's enough to check it on the IJ for X being the IJ matrix unit. So we're going to calculate add G on the IJ matrix unit EIJ. Well, that's some new point derivation to work out what it is. We need to work out, it's a new matrix, right? So we need to work out the RS entry of that matrix for every R and S, which you do just by evaluating that point derivation on TRS. And then by definition, add G it's the differential of int g. So by definition of differential, it's just eij of the comorphism of int g applied to trs. Now this guy here, uh, so this is a very similar calculation to the way we calculated uh, lambda g or rho g acting on trs um, last time. Um, so this is the same thing as, um, let me just write, so, so in fact, because, so, so here we've got, a, we, we, we're looking at conjugation by G, right? So you need to use the co-multiplication twice. So you need to co-multiply this T not once to get a T tensor T, but twice to get a T tensor T tensor T. So it's going to be T R A tensor T A B tensor T B S summing over A and B going from 1 to N, that's, that's, that's TRS co-multiplied twice. And then you have to evaluate in the first spot, you have to evaluate on G. And in the last spot, you have to evaluate on G inverse. Uh, so I, that's a little exercise. I'm not going to fill in the full detail of that uh, check. 
So that gives us an explicit formula for int g star on TRS. And then I'm applying EIJ to that. These are just scalars. So it's just EIJ on that TAB, which uh, forces A to equal I and uh, B to equal J, and then it's just one. And, and so we get TRI of G, T A B T and if oh, sorry A has been forced to be I. Oh, I'm evaluating that T. That middle T has been it, 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 we've uh, we've uh, done this partial derivative D T I J to this T A B. So it's 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 been turned into a scalar, um, and uh, then the second one this uh, B is being forced to be J. So there's our scalar. We've evaluated our point derivation now. And so uh, what this uh, number here tells us, it tells us the RS entry of that matrix. So this means that this thing right here, it's the n by n matrix with RS entry that we just calculated this guy, but this guy here is exactly the same as if you take the matrix G and you conjugate the IJ matrix unit by that G, that gives you an N by N matrix and you calculate its RS entry, right? The RS entry of that, that's exactly what this calculates uh, by the formula for matrix multiplication. This is the matrix unit here. And uh, so this shows that uh, this matrix is just this matrix, uh, and that's exactly the identity we're trying to prove when X is the IJ matrix unit, and that's good enough by linearity. So I think there's a proof in there somewhere. There we go. So that's uh, int G, the differential of int G, the automorphism of the group given by conjugation by G. That's called add G. It gives a Lie algebra automorphism from the, from the Lie algebra little g to little g. And in the case of the general linear group, um, add g is just conjugation again on the, on the general linear Lie algebra. OK, so that's, that's excellent. So now we've got int from g. So uh, this, this int sending little g to int g that I just defined, that's a group homomorphism from the group g to the group of all automorphisms of g in the category of groups. So this is a group homomorphism. And we've now just defined add from the group G to, so let me see, add uh, sent uh, an element G to add G. We just defined add G. It, uh, was, a, it, was, a, uh, it was a linear map from the general linear Lie algebra to the len general linear Lie algebra. It's invertible. So it was certainly an element of the general linear group, GL of G. In fact, it gives you an element of Lie algebra automorphisms of G, which is a closed subgroup of the general linear group GL of G. Um, okay, so um, this is uh, um, looking good. Let's see if there's a few comments I should be making here. Um, so uh, this right here, this guy here, this is a closed subgroup. of GL of G, so it's an algebraic group. Um, uh, uh, you, you've got to be a little bit careful here. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it's easy to see that it's a closed subgroup, right? It's just the, the equations that uh, define it. Um, um, uh, it's just a bunch of uh, polynomial equations to check that, that uh, this uh, preserves the Lie bracket. Um, in fact, it's, it's enough to see that, uh, um, okay, let's, so uh, 
um, what I wanted to say here, sorry, I'm getting um, a little uh, behind myself here. Um, I wanted to stress that uh, this guy here, the, the group of automorphisms of G, is absolutely not an algebraic group in general. Um, you have to think that, I think the, the, the basic example to think about is when G is just uh, that uh, two-dimensional torus, GM cross GM, and think about what automorphisms of the two-dimensional torus is, and you'll see it's not, it's not reasonable uh, as an algebraic group. So my notation is a little, this is a group homomorphism, but it's just a homomorphism of abstract groups from the group G to this group of automorphisms of G. But when you uh, differentiate int little g to get add little g, you get this uh, function capital add, which takes the group G to uh, the group of Lie algebra automorphisms of G. This now is an algebraic group because it's a closed subgroup of GLG. So uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that this guy here is not the differential of this guy because it doesn't even make sense. This guy is not a morphism of algebraic groups because ought groups of G is not an algebraic group. Okay. Um, so, um, but now at this level, we do have a morphism of algebraic groups. Okay, so, so it's, it's, it, writing it this way, putting int first and then add, it's just a little bit, a little bit confusing because uh, this int is not a morphism of algebraic groups. We didn't differentiate int, we just simply differentiated the automorphism int g to get add g. Fair enough. Uh, so now that we're at this capital A add, I can uh, differentiate. this uh, morphism of algebraic groups, capital add. So the differential of capital add, that'll give us a Lie algebra homomorphism from little g. Uh, well, the Lie algebra of the general linear Lie of, the, of GL of g on the previous line is uh, the Lie algebra, little gl, of that vector space, right? This is just the general linear group on the vector space. So Lie algebra is the general linear Lie algebra on that vector space. Uh, well, actually, it goes to uh, the Lie algebra of that uh, algebraic group of Lie algebra automorphisms of G. And uh, um, what could that possibly be? Well, that's just the Lie algebra of derivations. So right here, the Lie algebra of all derivations from G to G, so that we, we've observed that's a Lie algebra under bracket, um, this is, is exactly the Lie algebra of the uh, algebraic group of Lie algebra automorphisms of G. Okay, this is getting more confusing than I really wanted it to be. Uh, so uh, um, let's finally uh, tell you what the name of the differential of capital A ad is. It's little a ad. And uh, so this sends uh, x in the Lie algebra G to little add x. That's the notation used. Little add is defined to be the differential of big add. And uh, you can calculate this. Little add x. What derivation of G is it? So little a add x of, of y. It turns out it's just the Lie bracket xy. So it's pretty easy. So in fact, the uh, Jacobi identity is simply saying that uh, taking the Lie bracket with x is a derivation of the Lie algebra G. That's called add x. Um, so uh, this is a bit too painful for me to check. So uh, this is a, 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 a painful proof. So I'm going to omit the calculation. But you really just need to do it for the 
general linear case. And uh, then you have to go into coordinates to make the calculation. So I'm, I'm just going to omit that. But uh, little a ad is the differential of big A ad. It's a Lie algebra homomorphism from the Lie algebra G to the Lie algebra of derivations of G. And it sends X to add X, which is just taking the Lie bracket with X. Um, so let me see. You know that, uh, so from group theory, you know that int G, right, so the image of G under this homomorphism is actually a normal subgroup of ORT G. Um, so this is normal subgroup. And uh, maybe you even call that you, you call these the inner automorphisms. So inner automorphisms are normal in all automorphisms. And then that quotient of this group by that normal subgroup, those would, be, would have been called the outer automorphisms of your group G. And uh, the same goes on down here with little add. Add G sits inside der G. I guess I'm just gonna gonna start writing der G instead of der G comma G. Um, I didn't have that notation before. Um, but this is not a normal subgroup. This is this is an ideal. So uh, for Lie algebras, uh, um, you talk into just like for for all algebras. Um, what's important is is to have an ideal of that Lie algebra, and then you can form the quotient Lie algebra. So uh, um, these are called the uh, inner derivations. Just as elements of int g are inner automorphisms. So little add of g, the image of g under this Lie algebra homomorphism, those are the inner derivations which form an ideal of all derivations. And then you could form the quotient, that would be a Lie algebra, that would be the Lie algebra of outer derivations.